As we are coming close to the end of this year, let's wrap this year up with a positive outlook. I know that the day before just shocked the whole entire gaming industry with its horrible release and to be quite honest with you, I think it left an incredible awful mark on the survival genre as a whole. But with that being said, just like they say one bad apple does not make the whole tree bad, right? And it is very true, this is why I'm making this video to begin with. And I will just share with the rest of you guys my top most played survival games this year. Just do keep in mind that these games are not in any particular order. As a matter of fact, your list could look completely different, entirely different compared to mine. And this is why I would strongly encourage that you share your list with the rest of us. So, with that being said, let's begin. At number one, most of you will find this extremely obvious, but here it is, it's Valheim. LEGO Fortnite is on fire right now, but guess what's been around before LEGO Fortnite? Valheim. Don't get me wrong, LEGO Fortnite has its own little spin-offs that really does shine in its own little way, and it is extremely fun. But with that being said, Valheim to me is the king of this genre. They never sponsored me or provided a free copy of this game. This is me being completely straightforward with you guys. Although I personally love zombie shooters, Valheim was a new introduction to me personally. And if you have not tried this game still, Man, you're just missing out at this point. And number two, we have Seven Days to Die. This year, they released an update that was such a good addition to those players that were just returning back to the game. We remember Seven Days to Die feel very sluggish and just all over the place. But Alpha 21 just took a big shit on everyone's criticism and it brought back this survival game in ways it's never been seen before. And apparently the console version is right around the corner too, or at least it seems like it is based on Twitter posts. And number three, we have Breakwaters. Now, unfortunately, this one never gained the praise it deserves. Within the last year or two, I believe the game has undergone some serious development and the game as a whole has improved so much. The multiplayer is officially here, first of all, as well as creative mode. If you wanna play a game, survival game that heavily relies on physics of its engine, then I would highly, highly encourage you to look into this one a bit more. You can build ships, a variety of them actually, and you get to fight big sea creatures that are absolutely just terrifying. At number 4 we have Sons of the Forest. Okay, I said it, let's be honest, Sons of the Forest is a pure masterpiece. Not only has the game drastically improved from the original title, but this one introduced a completely new building system that took every single game developer by surprise, let alone gamers. When the game came out, it crashed Steam page on multiple occasions. That's a sign. That's the first sign that it's a good game. And overall, it was just a friendly reminder to the rest of us that these guys are kings of this genre and they definitely know what the hell they're doing. And before I conclude this title with number 5, let me just give a shout out to other survival games that were not played a whole lot by me this year. However, that does not mean that they are not worthy of recognition. Astroneer, Grounded, Project Zomboid, Small Land, V Rising. So, proceeding with number 5. Gonna be a surprise, Dinkum. Now this one is right in the middle between survival and sim. Don't let the simplicity of it fool you. I would actually go as far as saying that this game was just as addicting as Valheim. Not that it's the same, it was just as addicting. Keyword. Especially in terms of content deliverance. I spent a crap ton of time playing this game when I was bored and wanted to play a game that was simply casual and fun. The game is taking place in Australia and you can just build tons of items and exploration in this game is just phenomenal. It has a hook and it will keep you going until there is no tomorrow. Whether you're playing with your family or simply by yourself, the game will captivate you for hours to come. But only if you don't mind these types of games. Obviously, if you're a DayZ player or scum or even dead side, then obviously this is not for you. But generally speaking, you know, generally, if you're an open-minded person that is kind of open-minded to different things, Dinkum is actually a great one, especially for casual players. And this will conclude it. Thank you for watching and sticking around up until this point. Don't forget to let us know your personal list, your survival list. It is very unfortunate news with the day before and how everything just unfolded the way it did and so quickly. Please be mindful of games that you buy and wishlist. As you can see, there's plenty of good people out there truly good people that mean well but then also occasionally you may run into somebody that is simply driven by money and once they get what they want you'll never ever see them again this was your boy bruce and i'm out